All right. I'm situated in the new place. Uh, thanks to you guys. Uh, this is a an artist's live work uh, studio space. Um, it's got a kind of a garage door thingy here, uh, and then a door. That's the main door with like a little exit sign above it just for fun. And uh, I've got a stack of books behind me, and uh, the place is pretty cool. It's it's quite a bit of an upgrade. Um, and then behind, way back behind me, I think I can zero in on them. Are th the three busts of, let's see, let's see if you can see them there. Nietzsche on, on the uh, on the left there. Let's see. So Nietzsche on the left, Goethe in the middle, and Spengler on the right. And those were uh, 3D printed by a friend of mine named Josh Melnick. So thanks to Josh for, for doing that for me. Okay, so this is the new place. And also, don't forget, this is, uh, I also want to advertise the, the new course. We just finished the first course, Transformations of Consciousness Through Time. That was an eight-week course. Uh, we finished it. We had about 20 students. Everyone had a blast. We, we had a, a really good time. So what I've got lined up for July 16th now, and these are all on Saturdays at noon MST, is uh, a course on understanding mythology. This one's a bit more ambitious. It's 10 weeks. Uh, instead of eight, uh, there is an option to pay either 500 if you can afford that. But if you can't, there's an option to pay 350. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to start off with, of course, Freud and Jung's conflict, because out of their conflict emerged the theory of the archetypes of the collective unconscious, because the whole thing was over Jung writing a book about myth and Freud kind of being jealous about it. He, he was jealous. And he said, uh, well, now I'm working on a book about myth. And this is in the Freud Young letters. And so he writes Young and he says, uh, but don't worry, we won't collide because my book will go deeper than yours. And so this became totem and taboo, uh, which is nowhere near as good as Sy Symbols of Transformation, uh, which is the book that Young was working on at the time. Um, and so out of that comes the archetypes of the collective unconscious and a whole new theory of myth that does have its limitations. I am very critical of it. We'll look at um, we'll look at it from a, a skeptical and a critical angle. I'm not sure there is any such thing as a collective unconscious. Uh, to me, it sounds more like a junk heap in which Jung has taken all the world's myths and just trashed them in there. Kind of the same way that Milton does in the first chapter of Paradise Lost. He invents hell as the the place where all the previous pagan deities, such as Dagon and Lovecraft, took that Dagon character from uh, reading Paradise Lost for one of his first sh short stories that he wrote called Dagon as, as a teenage kid. He just throw Milton just throws all the world's pagan gods down into this pit of hell. That is the collective unconscious, Milton's hell. Same exact thing as Jung's uh, archetypes of the collective unconscious. So we will be critical. We'll look at it. These guys are all great, uh, but they all have their limitations, as does every thinker. Nobody gets everything right. So we're going to move from that to Joseph Campbell, uh, I think his primary and best uh, disciple. Um, we'll look at the hero with a thousand faces, the morphology of that whole cycle. And then we'll also look at his later works, the masks of God. And uh, whereas the hero with a thousand faces emphasizes all the, the similarities amongst myths. They're all one myth, the monomyth, uh, which is a term he borrowed from James Joseph Finnegan's Wake. Um, but then... A few years later, he wrote that in 1949. In the 50s, he went on a journey into India and Japan. And I edited those diaries. They were published in the late 90s as uh, Bakshi and Brahman and Saki and Satori. Um, and I, I helped edit those um, back in the mid 90s, his diaries. And while he was there, he began to realize um, the differences between myths are quite spectacular as well. Every civilization has its own Dasein, not a term he used. He never read Heidegger. But every civilization has its own. He did read Spengler. So we could say every civilization has its own Ur symbol. The Ur symbol of India is the world as a dream. Uh, the eyes are closed on all the statues. It's Maya. It's not real. But the Ur symbol for China is, of course, very real. It's the Tao, the yin-yang symbol. Uh, the light and the dark, and the light contains dark in it, and the light contains... Also, 
uh, the, the dark contains light and vice versa. And so that's the primary uh, world vision for China. Um, so he wrote the Masks of God when he got back, um, even though he was, was disgusted with India, uh, his mentor had been Heinrich Zimmer, the great Indologist. Uh, he was a fantastic Indologist who unfortunately died early. Uh, he was about my age, about 50, 54, 55. And um, so then Campbell edited his books. He began his career by editing Zimmer's books and then went, went to India. Zimmer never went to India, um, thinking that he was going to meet all these gurus and yogis and pundits and whatever to talk about metaphysics. But at the time, nobody was interested in that. They were interested in politics. The whole situation with Gandhi uh, had transpired. Um, so they were just interested in politics. He was very disappointed. And he actually writes in the diaries, I will never speak or write about India again, <laughs> which, of course, he did not keep. Uh, India was one of his favorite uh, mythological worlds, as it is mine as well. And we will also do a course on the history of Indian philosophy. That'll, that'll be another class upcoming possibly after this one. Uh, another possibility is to do a course on the novels of Cormac McCarthy. Finally, he's got two books coming out this year in December, The Passenger and another one. And uh, McCarthy is one of my all-time favorites. So we may do a, a course on McCarthy, like an eight-week or a six-week uh, course on McCarthy. Um, and then I also want to do the history of German idealism uh, philosophy from Kant through Fichte, Hegel, Schelling, uh, and down to Schopenhauer. Um, then a separate course at some point on Nietzsche and Wagner and their inner relationship, which I think uh, is really fascinating. So lots of courses are lined up here. Um, so in the myth course, then, after Joseph Campbell, we're going to look at the wor work of my mentor, William Merwin Thompson, um, who was a close friend and my mentor. Um, and he was a tough motherfucker, that guy. He, he was really rough. Um, he was like a, like the equivalent of one of those Zen masters that come along and smack you with a ruler to make sure you're awake and aware. <laughs> Our relationship was kind of like that. He was kind of like a Zen master, but I learned and I, I became, uh, very good at writing as a result of his honest criticisms. It's very important for young men to have a mentor that they can, tr whose opinion they can trust, who doesn't just say, oh yeah, that's pretty good. And, um, I would send Thompson manuscripts and he would say, this is a piece of shit. Uh, get this away from me. Um, as with my Gilgamesh book, I wrestled with that book, and my novel about Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh Redux. I wrestled and wrestled and wrestled with it. Um, could not get it right. But about 10 years later, I went back to it and it clicked. I got it right. Uh, by that point, I, I didn't need Thompson's opinion anymore. I, I was totally confident as a writer. So we're going to look at William Irwin Thompson's work and his model of history, uh, what he calls the different ecologies. Of, of history. And then uh, since I was one of his primary pupils, uh, then we're going to look at one of my books, Rage and the Word, Gilgamesh, Ignat, and Moses, and the Birth of the Metaphysical Age, Heidegger's Metaphysical Age, which extends from Plato down to Husserl. But I see these guys, Gilgamesh, Ignat, and Moses, as precursors, uh, as inaugurators of, of that age. So we'll examine my book, Rage and the Word, then after that, we're going to look at Maria Gimbutis, the great archaeologist who gave to J.J. Bakufin's uh, mother Wright. He was the first in the 19th century in the 1860s to come up with this idea that there was a matriarchy, uh, or at least a matrilineal tradition where uh, children took their mother's names, not their father's. He figured that out purely through linguistics, but Gimbutis grounded it in actual archaeology. And then her primary pupil uh, we're going to look at is J.P. Mallory, the expert on the Indo-Europeans, which um, she sees as the, the primary threat to her world. And then finally, we're going to finish with Mary Sedegast, who was a close friend of William Irwin Thompson's, and I also knew her as well. Um, so as we come down the timeline to the current world, uh, then we'll start getting into the specifics of... Uh, the current world. All right. So uh, I hope you join us. I will put the link to enroll uh, in the uh, bar below. And I hope uh, to see you in class. We'll have fun. I guarantee it.